Hello, YouTube land. We, some mess behind me here. We're, it's probably going to take us a week or so to get everything put away in the new place here. Loving it. Couldn't ask for more at this point. Loving it. Oh my gosh, total peace and as much serenity as a man could ask for want to the camera's way down here so i'm leaning forward so i'm, I'm gonna have to get something situated here where i can get some better videos out uh want to talk about firecrackers a dynamite today um there are a lot of us with short fuses, short tempers. We're just, uh, and I happen to be one of these. I mean, that would be me. But there are a lot of people that are like me. And in my particular case, I'm just looking, just literally looking and waiting what's going to be the deal next. You know, where, where is it? What are you going to do to me? Where is this going to go? So I walk around half defensive all the time or most of the time anyway. But I want to talk to you if you're anything like me. Um, and there's a lot of us. There's a whole lot of us. And, uh, the world is increasing in two camps because I'm going to let loose of the thing here. You got a camp of fourths of the stick of dynamite right here. And you got a camp of the do nothing acceptance crowd. I'm going to be in the short fuse dynamite crowd as much as I possibly can be. I can't fathom at all how any of us could live in this crazy, insane asylum that we call Earth today and not be effective, not walk around defensive, not walk around getting ready, being ready for it. It's not imaginable to me. And as I get older, I'm finding I should not be making excuses for walking around defensive, walking around looking at this world not happy with everything that's going on around me. Uh, therefore, I'm not going to give no more excuses. Um, this world is changing and I'm not accepting it. And it's as simple as that. I don't know no other way to put it. I'm not apologizing uh, that I walk around defensive and short fused and again ready to get them going uh, in any way, shape, or form. I want I want to tell you why. Uh, I want to give you a little brief outline of why. And I want you to, something I missed myself, uh, after reading it many times, uh, not hundreds of times, but more than ten, I'm, I'm, and I missed this. Uh, this, some of you going to click the button right now because you, you don't want to hear it. You, and most of you will be the ones that are considered nice and polite and sweet and calm. That'll hit the off button on this. And that's okay. This message must not be meant for you because God said he would blind you. He said he would blind you. And I'm going to show you where to go look and you'll see it. Uh, but folks, I would suggest everybody read at minimum chapter 1 in the book of Romans and the Bible. 
I'd get a King James Bible to read it too. Uh, there's nothing messed up about that translation. Nothing candy coated. They don't uh, take the word that that was uh, meaning homosexuality, for example, and replace it with a with prostitution, making you assume that just means a woman that's selling her body and things. There's a whole host of things. I'm not getting into all that. But I will tell you this. You'll see in there where it says they'll no longer believe that I created the world as God, but they'll start believing and, and worshiping the creature, the beast. And when it's talking about that, worshiping the creature and the beast in that chapter, uh, you replace that with evolution because that's what it's talking about. And when you read it in its entirety, you clearly see because God's pointing out, they go out, they see this wonder and they can't grasp a hold to anything good or decent about my creation. Therefore, uh, they start uh, worshiping the beast, evolution, worshiping that we come from beast, animals, which is not true. And that was foretold before anybody was even thinking about the theory of evolution, folks. It was written, signed, sealed, and delivered to folks before Charles Darwin or any of these people before him that touched on it. And then you look and it proceeds on to say people will be so prideful in their uh, iniquity uh, of homosexuality. Well, and no, it doesn't say that. Oh, yeah, it does. Man laying in bed with a man burning with lust towards one another. Woman laying in bed with woman burning towards lust with one another. Uh, and it talks about a whole lot of other things. And Romans is not looked upon as a book that's telling us our future. But it sure does tell us a lot of things. And when you look, when it's talking about that specific thing, homosexuality, it's talking about everybody being so proud about it. So these things were foretold to us before they came about. Uh, I often tell folks, and, and I mean this, if you give me, uh, if we figure out a way that we can communicate on WhatsApp or something, I'll sit and talk to you for an hour and show you that the earth was in fact created in, in a biblical way and uh, man did live for hundreds of years and I'll show you the science behind that because the science behind that fits. The science behind the science, guys, you wouldn't understand. It's neutrons and they do this and you just wouldn't understand it. And uh, so I, the older I get, the more I know. And I'm not the smartest guy in the group, but I, when I was in the, in the attending the university that I went to and graduated, uh, uh, my IQ was uh, 222, which is, was highly well above normal. And uh, I, know, I know I've lost a lot of that now, but uh, I'm not saying that for self-pride. I'm just saying that I know how to read. And I know what I read and I know what I look at. And I know how to be in discernment, which is analyzing the evidence of things. And so I just want to boil down with this that, no, I don't want to be in acceptance. Yes, I do want to be defensive and looking around. Yes, I do want my fuse to be short before I get wound up in mess of this world and the junk that lies therein. And, uh, Yes, I want my son to be that way. I do not want us walking around uh, basically uh, being a respecter of, of bad people 
that are promoting bad things and being in acceptance of all this garbage and this evil uh, and walking around being overly nice about it because that's not God's love. Uh, you know, everybody wants to, or a lot of people, uh, you got two major camps, you got three major camps. You got the Christian, the real Christian, who really knows what's going on and is not happy with it at all. And they're shunned away. They're the bigots. They're the bad guys. Just like the Bible said they would be uh, well in excess of 2,000 years ago. Then you got the camp that wants to tell you all about the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, but have no idea who he is, what he stood for, uh, no, nothing about the Bible. They just sprout love, 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 and that is very satanic. And then you just got an evil bunch that uh, attack and say things like, and this is how you can pick up on what's right and what's wrong. You can pick up on murders, abortion very quickly because they'll hop out in the streets with banners saying uh, the only mistake M Mother Mary made was not aborting Jesus and things like that. Uh, they're the evil. And I'm going to stand up against it, fight it, die fighting it, or whatever I need to do every minute of every day, but accepting it and going, oh, yes, it's okay because I'm a Christian and Jesus taught me love. Uh, you might want to wake up and realize that you were the ones falsely so-called that the Bible told us would be in the biggest number of named Christians. Uh, and you're not walking down a narrow path at all because you don't even want to learn about nothing. And what you do learn, you want to be in denial about. Uh, Satan is not coming with the big horns and coming as a ferocious animal. He's coming as a beautiful thing that makes you feel good and tells you you love when in actuality you're, you're evil. So I just wanted to say a couple of these things. I put a video out maybe about nine months ago, talking a little bit about this, but uh, we're going to stay short-fused up in this house. We're going to stay hating this world up in this house. Uh, we're going to keep pushing forward, trying to do big, grandiose things uh, so that we can spread messages. That's what this is about. Uh we already know who the champ is up in this house. We are, we already, we don't need belts. We don't need accolades or anything like that. The main focus here is to spread a message. That's the, that's the main thing. And push the body that we don't necessarily care about saving as much as the next guy does uh, to, his, to its limits on a daily basis and things like that. That's what's involved in the sport aspect of what we do. And uh, Joe's constantly trying his best to learn about a variety of different topics and things like that. And that's just what we spend our time doing. So we're going to keep walking. Uh, we're going to keep telling people the truth, uh, even when it puts us in a bad position and we have to walk away a little nervous because we told this guy or this gal over here the truth. I'd rather walk off doing that than walk off saying and having God look at me and say, why didn't you tell them? You didn't even bother to say anything to them. So trash belongs in the trash. If we don't start taking it, and putting it where it belongs and getting out of where it doesn't belong. This whole world's going to be filthied up till it just stops revolving. And uh, uh, that's eventually going to happen anyway, but it's really no use in helping it along, is it? So we're going to keep walking the walk we walk. We're going to keep talking the talk we talk. We're going to keep being happy to more people that hate us in this world, and we're just going to keep moving forward. We want to give. We truly hope that 
I truly hope, we do in this house too, truly hope that if the king of all kings, the president of all presidents, the Lord of all lords comes a knocking at your door, we hope and pray that you answer it. I really, really do. Uh, we hope and pray that if something else comes a knocking at your door, these horror stories are true to large major extents. If something bad comes your way and comes a knocking at that door, we hope you don't answer it. And unlike the horror movies, you can just keep the door to evil shut. And you can open the door to real love, which is a love you nor I can really understand or put our brains around. Uh, so all these things are your decision. God gave us the right to choose, and I still choose to practice my right to choose to not accept a lot of these things going on in this world. It's not going to be shoved down my throat. I'm going to continue to get angry about it. I'm going to continue to force against, uh, voice against, and, and force against <clears throat> most of this junk going on. And that's how we're going to move. That's what we're all about. So we want it to be known publicly. Uh, Joe, even on the street, he's like me. If we hear somebody bad mouthing God, we, we go right to it and we try to stop it. If it gets down to physical means, even. I, there's no hold back with us. We're not holding back. Uh, I don't know where that idea and that concept is coming from, but we are not holding back. We're not doing it. Maybe it's too powerful and we have to flee, but we're not sitting there and accepting it, and neither should you. Neither should you. You should fight it, point it out, tell everybody that's there, hey, don't fall in listening to this junk. This is evil. And if you're the only guy standing in the middle of 200, just say it. Just say it. I'm the guy that sat in, in a, uh, that was, ran for office many years ago that pointed out that a GOP senator was a dirty, rotten snake. And I was the first one to stand up. I said something. Every, everybody in there, maybe 400 people were against me. I said, let me state my case. They allowed me to. And we had four members that were against what I was saying when I was finished talking. Who were the four, the executive committee of that party. Everybody else on the floor agreed and we censured the hell out of that dirty, rotten snake. And that was Richard Burr. So if you're an American and you're watching this and you're right leaning, uh, that party wouldn't have done nothing to Richard Burr. You'd still be liking him to, to that, not Richard Burr, Richard Burr from North Carolina. Uh, and I'm glad I stood up. And I was nervous as hell when I stood up. But I didn't care. And I stood up. And I knew from all those many years back, I'm going to keep standing up. You know, I could get in the street and do these or get in the ring and do these. Get on a football field and knock the hell out of a guy and not whistle th thinking twice about it. But when it comes to standing up, that's hard to do. When everybody comes against you and to keep you cool, I was shaking like a leaf. And I learned that day, that many years ago, dealing with that evil piece of junk that is best stand up. One guy can make a difference. So stand up, folks. To all my Christian brothers and sisters, I hope the king of kings of kings, the emperor of the emperors, just showers good blessings that you need upon you and all of us. Everybody have a good day.